In this video, we're going to take a look at writing quadratic functions and equations in intercept form. First thing, we have to review or refresh our memory what intercept form is. Remember, intercept form of a quadratic is f of x equals a times the quantity x minus p times x minus q. And remember, p and q are the x-intercepts for our um, graph. Sometimes this is called factored form as well uh, as intercept form because it looks a lot like what you would see. Uh, it looks exactly like what you would see if you factored a quadratic equation. So in order to write a function we need to have the intercepts and we need one other point that's on our graph. So let's look at what we've got going in this graph right here. Sometimes you might be given points, other times you might have to do a little bit of work. So in this case, we've got our intercepts. There's one. It's located at the point 3, 0. And then we've got another intercept over here located at the point 5, 0. Okay, so there's our two intercepts. And then we need another ordered pair that's on the graph. So if I take a look, we look for a spot where the graph goes through an intersection there. It looks like right about there would be a point that's on that graph. So that is located at the ordered pair 2, negative 3. All right, so 2, negative 3. Then, once I get all of those points figured out, I'm going to go ahead and do something that you don't necessarily have to do, but I think this is really helpful, and it'll kind of speed things up for you and make it a little bit less confusing. So what I want to do now is I'm going to label all of these numbers with the variable that they're going to go in for. Okay, So I kind of get all that stuff organized, and then I'll just be able to plug it in. So first of all, remember my x-intercepts are the p and q. So I'm going to label the 3 as the p and the 5 as the q. Okay, You could flip those around. It doesn't matter. I just went in order, and that's perfectly fine. Then I've got that other ordered pair, and that is going to be an x and a y. Okay, So then I've got all those things organized, and I can just go back here and start plugging it in. f of x is the same as y, so we're going to have that negative 3 start in there, equals, we don't know a, that's why we're doing this, is to figure out what a is, and then x, our x right there is 2, minus p, my p is 3, and then x shows up again, still 2, minus q, which is 5. There we go. Okay, then sometimes when students see this, they want to FOIL, and, but we don't need to work that hard because we can simplify this, right? So it's a, and when you write this, be careful to keep the multiplication very clear. If you just put a and then maybe use a dot and put a minus 1, sometimes it can all of a sudden look like a subtracting 1 instead of multiplied by negative 1, and that can get us in trouble. So just uh, being careful of how you write these things. 2 minus 5 would be negative 3, like so. And then, remember, multiplication, we can do it in any order. And so we have negative 3 equals negative 1 times negative 3 would be positive 3 and I'm gonna go ahead and write that 3 first because that's a much more familiar form rather than saying a3 I'm gonna write 3a finally divide by 3 on both sides and we end up with negative 1 equals a now I can write my function so my function I'm gonna go ahead and plug back in everything except for this x and y. I'm done with the x and y because that's just one specific point. I want to leave the x and the y in the equation because that would be all the ordered pairs that make up that graph. So we have our function f of x equals a, which is negative 1 in this case, so just negative if we want to do that, and then x minus p, my p is still the same right here, so minus 3, and then x again, minus q, which is 5, and boom, there is my function. If I want to check, 
I could graph this and make sure that it looks like this graph that we see right here. One thing that we can notice for sure is that this being negative makes sense because it's opening down. So it feels like we're on the right track. Grab your favorite graphing uh, tool, whether it's a graphing calculator, Desmos, uh, GeoGebra, and just do a quick check there. Make sure that it looks good. All right. Let's try another one, and for this one, we're not given a graph, we're just given the information that we need. So first of all, we're given the x-intercepts, so again, remember, I'm just going to label that stuff, so P and Q. Then, I'm passing through this ordered pair right here, and that is going to be the ordered pair x, y. Alright, here we go again, same story, we're going to start by substituting everything in so that we can solve for a so my f of x is also known as y so negative 6 equals a times x so in this case is 3 and then we've got minus p so right here minus and the p is negative 3 so be careful there okay so 3 minus negative 3 and then x again is still 3 minus q in this case so minus 5 okay so then again the same story we're gonna go ahead and simplify inside those parentheses minus a negative is always plus so 3 plus 3 is 6 so we have a times 6 and then 3 minus 5 would be negative 2 like so then finally we have negative 6 equals 6 times negative 2 would be negative 12 again pulling that out front there so it looks more familiar negative 12 times a almost done divide by negative 12 both sides and then we get that fraction there which we can simplify to be 1 half divide by negative 6 top and bottom we have 1 half equals a almost there now remember we're done with this that was just one specific point from our graph. To write our equation, we want it to represent all the points that make up the graph. So finally, we have our function, or it could be an equation. This could be y equals, if you're asked to write an equation, equals our a, 1 half, and then x minus our p. Our p, again, is negative 3, so minus negative 3 would be plus 3 and then finally x minus 5. Alright, so writing quadratic functions or equations in intercept form, first of all we have to remember intercept form right here. And remember the intercepts, the x-intercepts are the p and the q. We can retrieve that information from a graph like we saw here. And remember we need the intercepts and another point that's on the graph or we might just be given those things and then we can go ahead and write our equation that way or our function. I hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.